What's up Spartan Homers? My name is Aaron. In this video, I'm going to show you how I set up a touchscreen control interface for my 3D printer using OctoPrint, OctoDash, and a RazPad 3 Raspberry Pi tablet. Press start. In a previous video, I reviewed the basics of the RazPad 3 tablet that SunFounder sent me for review. It's basically a screen and a case inside which you can install a Raspberry Pi 4 and convert that computer into a tablet. This device is actually perfect for the application that I'm about to show you. We're gonna go over how to install OctoDash as a touchscreen overlay for OctoPrint, and I'll show you why you're never gonna to wanna to use your printer's native UI again. OctoPrint is a super cool way to remotely control and monitor your 3D printer. It allows you to upload files directly to your printer's memory for printing, allows you to start, stop, cancel prints, allows you to monitor and control your bed and nozzle temperatures, and so much more. In my last video, I showed how to install OctoPrint on a Raspberry Pi and how to integrate it with Home Assistant. If you haven't done that yet, you're gonna to need to do that first. So head over there and check that video out before you watch the rest of this. In my case, I've installed OctoPrint on a Raspberry Pi 4, and then I put that Raspberry Pi 4 inside my RazPad 3, giving the Raspberry Pi a touch screen and visual interface for it. I then attached a Raspberry Pi camera to the Raspberry Pi inside of the RazPad by threading the camera's cable through a slot provided in the back of the tablet. Okay, so next, let's look at OctoDash. One of the problems with 3D printers is their user interface. You really wanna be able to quickly access the necessary controls without having to turn a knob, scrolling through poorly laid out menus until you find the controls that you're looking for. OctoPrint really isn't the greatest solution for this because it isn't optimized for touchscreen, but here's where OctoDash comes in. OctoDash can be installed on top of OctoPi and works as a touch interface for your printer, sending commands through OctoPrint to your printer. In order to install OctoDash, we're gonna to need to input an install command into the Raspberry Pi terminal. If you followed my OctoPrint setup guide in the previous video, then you made sure that you set up SSH when you installed OctoPi. First, you're gonna to navigate to the OctoDash webpage that I've linked in the description. Here you're gonna see a line that you need to enter that calls an installation script. To enter this command, you're gonna either need a keyboard to plug into your Raspberry Pi and then you're gonna to need to type the whole command in, or you're gonna need a software like PuTTY to access the RazPad terminal via SSH. If you use SSH on your PC, you can just copy and paste the command directly into the terminal. Just copy it and then right click in PuTTY to paste it in. Once you've done this, Press enter and then wait for OctoDash to install. It took about eight minutes for me. Once installed, you're given some options for which plugins you want to install. If you don't know which ones apply to you, you can install them and then disable them later in the settings, or you can skip them and install them later in the UI. I recommend at least installing the OctoDash Companion, Display Layer Progress, Preheat Button, and Print Time Genius. Also, do Filament Manager. You move between these options using the arrow keys up and down and then select them by pressing spacebar. Once you've selected them, press enter. It will begin installing your plugins and then ask if you want to enable cores, which allows any browser to send requests to OctoPrint via the API. I chose yes for this option. And next it's gonna ask if you want OctoDash to start on boot, choose yes. Next it's gonna ask if it should set up the update script, choose yes. Finally, It'll ask if it should reboot the Raspberry Pi. Choose yes again. It should then display a message that OctoDash has been successfully installed before rebooting. And there you have it. Now it's time to head over to the RazPad. Now you're gonna use the touch interface of the RazPad to finish your OctoDash setup. But you are gonna need a keyboard for one part of the setup, so don't forget to bring that along. Once your RazPad is started up, it displays a welcome message. Tap next, and it will then ask you to select your OctoPrint instance from a list. Tap the instance that is shown in that list, and then it will ask you to authenticate OctoDash. Tap the send request button, and then you gotta jump over to your PC and navigate to OctoPrint. From my last video, you know that you can either type in the IP address of your Raspberry Pi, or RazPad in this case, or you can type in octopi.local into the browser. 
If you already had it open, you may need to reload the instance of Octopi in the browser before you'll be able to get into it. After that, you should see a message in the upper right corner that says access request. Click allow on this message to allow Octodash access. Next, jump back over to the RASPAD and it's going to ask you to give some info to personalize Octodash for your printer. You'll need a keyboard to fill in this field, so plug one in and give your printer a name. After this, it'll ask you about your extruder's feed length and feed speed. If you don't know them, you can skip them for now and set them up later in the settings. Tap next and it'll ask you which plugins you are running. You can toggle them on or off here. Tap next and then tap done after Octodash does its checks. You should be taken to the main Octodash screen. If you don't see the current hot end and bed temperatures reported on the screen, just restart your RASPAD by holding down the power button on the side for three seconds to turn it off and then hold it down for three seconds to turn it back on again. This will restart Octoprint and now those temperatures should be displayed. As you can see, the main screen shows your hot end and bed temps as well as fan speed control, a file explorer, filament information, and a controls button. Tapping the hot end temp button allows you to set the hot end temperature and tapping the bed temperature works similarly. When the temperature is set, the main page is gonna show both the current and the target temperature. Tapping the fan allows you to set the fan speed from zero to 100, although for some reason it doesn't report the current speed for my printer. The control button opens a menu with more advanced options for X, Y, and Z movement, and also has buttons for homing the printer, bed leveling, which I have not used, preheating, cooling and also shutting down or restarting Octoprint. Preheating will set the bed and extruder to temperatures predefined in settings and cooling will set those temperatures to zero and start them cooling down. The file explorer shows you a list of files on your SD card and allows you to select one for printing or delete one if you want. The filament button helps you change out filament rolls by retracting the filament, allowing you to change the roll and then purging for a set amount of filament. The settings menu also lets you change a lot of these predefined settings like what should the default temperatures be for preheating, what should the default temperature be for purging filament and all kinds of things like that. It also allows you to change what those buttons that I was just talking about actually do. You can change the icons. You can even change what G code command is sent to your printer when you tap them. So those buttons are fully customizable if there's something else you'd rather have them do. I'm really just scraping the surface with Octodash. There is so much more you can do with it, so it's well worth reading up on it to see what other people have done. As you can see, it's really fairly straightforward to install Octodash and get started with it. And it's awesome how well the Raspad 3 tablet works as a touch interface right out of the box with not a lot of setup needed. I use a Creality Ender 3 V2 printer and honestly, I can't stand using that interface after I've started using Octodash. As I mentioned in my full review for the Raspad, I really think that this is the perfect use case for this device. One thing I would say though, is that you make sure you get a long enough camera ribbon cable, if you're attaching a camera to your RASPAD, to make sure that there's still mobility of that tablet because a part of a tablet's purpose is mobility. You wanna make sure that you have some freedom of movement with that tablet. Also, if you turn off the screen of the RASPAD or put it to sleep by pressing the power button once, it actually shuts down Octoprint. This is probably one of the biggest downsides or disappointments that I have this Raspad. It's the fact that you're gonna to have to leave the screen on all the time if you want Octoprint and Octodash to stay running in the background. I've just accepted this issue at this point and I just leave the screen on all the time. Haven't noticed the Pi overheating or anything like that. Anyway, that's all I got for you in this video. What do you guys think about this Raspad? What do you think about the application for it? Let me know in the comments. I put a link for the Raspad in the description of this video and also, I put a link to my website if you guys are interested in seeing all the different smart home products that I use in my home. If you like what you saw in this video, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching. See ya. Press start.